Hello friends, welcome back to this week's Children's Liturgy of the Word for all of our students and their families. Once again, Father Mike Perucho, the Associate Director of Vocations for the Archdiocese. And we are entering into our last final days of these Children's Reflections as our school year comes to conclusion and also as we continue to pray and hope that in the very near future our churches will be open with opportunity for all of our families to gather for Mass, not, on, not only on Sundays, but if you choose, also on those weekdays as we once again receive that nourishment of the word and sacrament from our Lord Jesus Christ. And today, my friends, we will do our reflection based upon a first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. At Miletus, Paul spoke to the presbyters of the church of Ephesus, keep watch over yourselves and over the whole flock which the Holy Spirit has appointed you overseers, in which you tend the church of God, that he acquired with his own blood. I know after my departure, savage wolves will come among you, and they will not spare the flock. And from your own group, men will come forward, perverting the truth, to draw the disciples away from them. So be vigilant, and remember that for three years, night and day, I am ceasingly admonished, each of you with tears. And now I commend you to God. And to that great word of this, of his, that can be, build you up and give you the inheritance among all who are consecrated. I have never wanted anyone's silver or gold or clothing. You know well that these very hands have served my needs and my companions. In every way I have shown you that by hard work of that sort we must help the weak. And keep in the mind of the Lord Jesus, who himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. When he had finished speaking, he knelt down and prayed with them all. They were all weeping loudly, as they threw their arms around Paul and kissed him. For they were deeply distressed that he had said that they would never see his face again. Then they escorted him to the ship. The word of the Lord. You know, one of the great things we know about St. Paul was that he was a missionary. He took the word of God and traveled throughout what we know now as the area of Europe to all of these different places. He brought Jesus to the people. Now you can imagine that was probably an exciting thing to do. Being able to go from one community to another. Being able to spread that word and teach people about Jesus' love and his goodness. Of course, he experienced his trials. People sometimes didn't listen to him. They didn't like him. They ignored him. But he also built up these wonderful communities of love. These communities that did support him. He became a father to many of them became a brother to many of them because he brought Jesus Christ. What we hear in our first reading today is a very sad scene because here is Paul speaking to the people and now telling them that I'm going away. And listen to what the people said at the very end. How they were filled with tears. How they were giving him hugs. How they knew that this was the last time they were going to see their friend here on earth. It's a very emotional moment. Now I know for us who are listening today, we too have experienced great emotion during these last eight to nine weeks. I don't even know how long it's been anymore. And I know in many ways, for those who are listening, we have not seen many of our friends Face to face, physically face to face. Yes, sometimes on Zoom. Yes, sometimes we talk to them on the phone. But we haven't been in their actual presence and given, them a, given us the ability to embrace them. To give them a high five, a handshake, a fist pump, whatever it is. We haven't had that opportunity to truly be in that physical presence of one another. And I know in many ways that has been hard. It's been challenging. I myself haven't seen some of my friends in these weeks. 
and we talk on the phone, yes, but it's not the same. And what this reminds us of, my friends, is the importance of continuing to be in the presence of one another. The importance of relationship, the importance of community, the importance of being able to be with those whom we care about and whom we love. During these difficult times, we still do that, of course, with prayer. And prayer will always keep us close to one another, wherever we are. But at the same time, as we wait for things to ease up, hopefully in these next few weeks, when that moment comes, when we can be in that presence of one another, don't hesitate to show and express your love of them with that hug. Don't forget to express that friendship with that handshake, with that high five. Don't forget to experience that great joy of God that is present whenever two or three are gathered in His name. And to continue to help us along with that. That's what I invite you to do, especially with your family now. To so take advantage of these opportunities, of these hugs, of these kisses that we give our parents, and that we receive whatever it is. Because those, my friends, are the beautiful way that we continue to show our love, our joy, our hope, our peace that we offer to one another. That's how we show that friendship that is founded within that bond of Christ. And that's how we show to one another that we are a family of God. Amen.